If you only have enough money to buy one lens, but you need to be able to film a bunch of different sports with it, both indoors and outdoors, all that in the highest quality possible, apparently the Tamron 35 to 150 f2 to 2.8 is the lens for the job. But is it really? Let's find out. Hey guys, my name is Ish. I've been a professional sports videographer for over 16 years, but whether you're a beginner or a pro yourself, when it comes to buying lenses, we all face the same dilemma. You can either choose to buy a high quality zoom lens with very shallow depth of field that will make your image look amazing. But not only are those lenses very expensive, they also cover a very limited zoom range, which will force you to buy more than one lens. Or instead you can buy a much cheaper lens that will cover a much wider zoom range, like an 18 to 200 for example. But the image won't be as sharp, the autofocus won't be as fast or reliable, and you'll struggle a lot more in low light conditions. Let me know how I look. <laughs> But what if there was a lens that can finally do it all? Basically a lens that you can use for any sport in any conditions and that you know for a fact will be able to get any shot from any reasonable distance in very high quality. Well, that's exactly what the Tamron 35-150 to f2-2.8 promises to deliver. This full-frame lens for Sony E-mount cameras has a zoom range not quite as great as an 18-200 to budget lens, but it's way closer than any other high-quality lens on the market. Plus, the fact that it has an f2-2.8 to aperture is amazing for low-light conditions and blurry backgrounds. Especially considering that none of Sony's current zoom lenses can go below f2.8. So I can't wait to test a few shots at f2 and see what it looks like. My plan is to test this lens at a few basketball games, a soccer game, maybe even some rugby. And every time I'll show up with this lens only, no backup. I'm putting all my eggs in this Tamron basket. However, my personal fear is that a lens that can do everything ends up not being great at anything. Plus, I'm also worried that 150mm might not be long enough for outdoor sports like football or soccer, for example. And on an even more personal level, as you may or may not know, uh, I'm about to move back to Canada after living in Australia for 12 years and I really need to get rid of some of my gear. Otherwise, I'll end up with about five luggage worth of just video equipment alone. So. With that in mind, I'd really like to get rid of my uh, Tamron 28 to 75 and my 70 to 180 and just use this lens instead. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, there's a lot riding on this for me um, from a financial point of view, especially since I obviously already bought the lens. But um, yeah, I'm very curious to see uh, if it meets my expectations. But anyway, enough talking. Let's see what this guy can do. Yeah. Nine on one, Shelby Drive, look alive, look alive. Niggas came up on this side, now they on the other side. Oh well, fuck them, dawg. We gon' see how hard they ride. I get racks to go outside, and I spit it with the guys. We up on the other side, niggas acting like we tied. I've been gone since late July, niggas acting like I died. They won't be expecting shit when Capo go to slide. Cause I told them that we put that shit behind us, but I lied. So I figured out a way to turn the 150mm maximum focal length into a 225 maximum. But before I show you how, let me first show you what 150mm uh, actually looks like. Hey, look who I'm around, man. If I fucked up, I'ma be downtown, man. Full flow bound, man. That's if I get caught, man. Push me to the edge so it really ain't my motherfucking fault, man. I'm not to blame, man. This fucking industry is cut. Though I'm not the same, man, and I could let you check the tag. Now I'm rocking name brand. I'm only chasing after bags. Now I got a game plan, and I'm out here with the whoop. But I was able to push this reach even further by using something called clear image zoom. With the clear image zoom feature of my Sony camera turned on, I can go beyond the optical zoom limit of my lens, in this case, 150mm. All I have to do is press the zoom rocker and the camera then uses clear image zoom technology to enlarge the image up to an additional 1.5x in 4K and 2x in 1080p. Obviously there is a small loss in quality, not too bad in 1080p and barely noticeable in 4K.
All right, so is the 35 to 150 everything that I hoped it would be? Um, honestly, I'd say mostly yes, because Tamron has definitely done something different with this lens. It does feel a lot more like a premium option than any of my other Tamron lenses. The materials are a lot less plasticky feeling and the zoom and focus ring have a much nicer feel and responsiveness to them. There are also extra options that you can see on other premium lenses like a lock, a manual focus toggle switch, three custom buttons, as well as a three-way custom switch that changes what the custom buttons do. And last but not least, a USB-C input that allows you to do some really cool things using the Tamron Lens Utility app. But the price to pay for that premium feel, the wide zoom range, and the amazing aperture is the fact that this lens is fairly large and quite heavy. It is for sure the heaviest lens I've ever used, and when I was out shooting with it, even though I'm a pretty big guy myself, um, the size and weight of this thing was definitely something that I could not ignore. I was more than happy to put it down here and there when I had the chance to give my arms a quick break. But also keep in mind that I was filming handheld the entire time. Otherwise, the autofocus worked great for me. It's pretty much as quick, accurate, and smooth as I hoped it would be, so no complaints. But when it comes to image quality, I'll admit I was nervous. The focal range and the aperture seemed too good to be true, so I figured it would have to suffer somewhere. But honestly, it's pretty damn good. There's great sharpness, the colors look good, and the slightly variable aperture is very easy to work with. I personally only use f2 for crowd shots, meanwhile all my action footage was filmed at a constant f2.8 or f4. When it comes to the price however, that's where things get a bit more complicated. Earlier in the video I mentioned that this lens was very different from other Tamron lenses and that goes for both features and quality, but also for the price. The 35 to 150 costs 1899 US dollars. So this is not a budget lens by any means. But then again, if you compare it with a Sony G Master lens with a much smaller zoom range of only 24 to 70, it is starting to look like somewhat of a steal. Personally, I don't think that this lens is overpriced at all because of everything that you're getting, especially if your goal is to only have one lens, you might as well get one that has both versatility and quality, but ultimately, it's not a cheap lens. So for some people, including myself, it's a no-brainer, but for others, you might be way better off with the combination of two much cheaper lenses I reviewed last year in the video appearing on your screen right now. So if that sounds like something a bit more your speed, click on the thumbnail before it's too late and I'll see you guys there. Otherwise, thanks again for watching. My name is E and I hope I earned the privilege of your time.